Okay. So by the look of it, that Tesla coil attack seems to be on a cooldown of about two seconds. All of the attacks here are fairly slow and predictable. That is neither slow nor predictable. Actually, no, it can be predicted. Just I didn't know what it was going to do, so... Woo! Good so far. Play it safe. to do a Tesla attack. Okay, so how exactly would I dodge that attack? Answer, I think the several times I've seen it, it always, the Vault Man always seems to go in a counterclockwise fashion. So if I can understand is if that's always the case then it's a relatively simple matter to react to it Almost. Yeah, this boss is definitely doable. And that time it went clockwise. So in that case, there must be a tell as to which direction it's going to go. Maybe something to do with the rotation of the sprites. If there isn't, then that is then that would be indicative of an unfair pattern. At the end of the exchange, this is my fault for uh, getting hit way too many times. At that, I also don't want, don't know what causes, or rather, I do know what causes that specific attack. I just don't know how to dodge it. Because it's proximity-based. I think not just proximity-based, but also on a cooldown. So the first attack will happen when Big Man is like, let's say, two blocks away from it. Then from there, two seconds rinse, and then it does the second attack. Oh, clever jerk. See? It's on a pattern. Good design. Ah, 
How did I manage that snipe? I'll take it. Crap. Was too far was too close to the wall. And erased. That was a fair boss fight. A fair stage. Well designed. Kudos. You got Vault Shock. Which seems to be this game's area attacking weapon. Or screen nuke weapon. Good to know. Alright, so in that case. No. 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 I hate you, game. You can't access the shop. No. 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 I hate you. Fine then. So in that case. Let's go to the next logical. Toxic Man. Because, thinking about it, I have an electrical weapon. And using science, electricity would be a decent way of getting rid of toxins. There's such a thing as electrolysis. No! I may be bullshitting, but such a thing as electrolysis does exist. How do I get past those? Oh, okay. Interact with the chemical pipes. Good to know. Ow! Uh, smells like sludge. Okay, so... Now I'm confused as to what caused us that to react. I thought it was shooting it, but... It might not be. I would also like to take some time while we're going through Toxic Man stage here to essentially point at the elephant room here. Okay, so it is shooting at specific places. Okay. Um, so while I was doing a little bit of extra research about this particular game, and also Perfect Blue, because let's face it, I want to get Perfect Blue working. I found something kind of aggravating. That being an absolute influx of pointlessly negative reviews. Specifically for Perfect Blue. Just because people were like, oh hey, this game is quote unquote infinitely better. No. I'm just going to say this immediately. A good chunk of the people that have given those negative reviews are literally doing it because toxic fandom. If anything, the simple fact that people are doing that is very telling. Of... Oh, wow. That's dangerous. No, dude. Red is damaging. It's very telling of the people who play this game, who play the game, and also of the game's quality. Believe it or not, review bombing is review bombing another game within a similar genre and calling it an inferior version makes me as a person ah clever design. It's also a bit of a gotcha trap. And also clever stupid design, I should say. Oh, that's rude. Right, what thought was I getting at? Alright. So, seeing a bunch of people negatively review bomb a game and claim that another game is a quote-unquote vastly superior product gets me skeptical. 
If anything, I start to question the game that you're trying to plug, that you're trying to plug, and if anything, I will actively try to avoid it for that reason. That other people are essentially ruining the experience for no good reason. It's one thing to support a game you like, it's another to actively threaten a game you hate. And I would like for this to be a message to you that other indie developers might take with them. Keep a close eye on your fandom. Whether you like it or not, it is at least partially your responsibility. Because at the end of the day, you're the one rallying them together in front of your product. Oh good, calm water. And those guys can change their chemical prop. Oh, enemies, period, can change their chemical properties. Ooh, that, that's dangerous. By the look of it, the blue seems to accelerate them. It doesn't do anything for Mega Man, though. Kind of a disappointment. And by the look of it, the red chemical also seems to increase the attack speed of units. Or opposing units, I should say. But yeah, for indie developers who might see this in the future, and I, I'm unsure as to how many that might be, if any at all. Keep a close eye on your fandom. Because they're the ones who will not only determine how well your work succeeds, but also how well other people's works succeed. And if you, in order to create a healthy fandom, you need to be supportive. It's not just uh, general good business practice, it's also being a good standard human being. And I do understand that we live in the type of day and age where people's opinions are on blast all the time. And what I'm essentially saying is tantamount to saying no one is allowed to have an opinion, or potentially even worse than that. No. Strictly no, that isn't what I'm saying, and how dare you try to twist my words, so to speak. All I'm saying, or rather, intending to say, is that people should be a little more mindful of what they're saying. Oh crap. I don't know what to think about that type of design right there at all. That the enemy is mandatory. I mean... You can off-screen it and continue progress. It's still kind of annoying. Ah! And that is uh, a dangerous situation. Okay, maybe I should start pulling out special weapons. Loath as I might be to do so. Oh, this sucks. Ow. Double ow. Alright, let's try this again. Wow, one hour? Well then again, it's a Mega Man game. What'd you expect? There is the stigma of Mega Man games being hard. They really aren't. But unfortunately, it takes a lot to correct the stigma. I did it again. He's not even facing the right way. 
Oh no wait, he is. Ow. Ah. Health. Oh good, I get to rinse some of my attempt on this stage. Oh good, I get to eat more shit in this stage. Just face tank. Ugh. Good so far. Oh, you gotta be kidding me! Okay, use no shots here. Better. Huh! That almost got dicey. And we're at the boss. Excellent. Oh no. I already don't like how this is going. Okay, red is his aggro form. I thought, I'm just curious. I won't be using it for the fight, because I like Buster Roll. That seems to be his weakness weapon. Good to know. He even staggers him in place. Okay. The patterns on this guy are predictable. They're doable. Good. that burst attack. That's the only one that I'm, uh, skeptical about. Because it looks a little too nutty. Those attacks? Really simple. Okay, so maybe by jumping up the far wall. Ah, This is doable. Let's try this again. One, two, ah, three, four. That's a little too tight. And on record, and on record, I'd also like to state that the whole Buster Only thing that includes zero use of rush. Good. See, this is doable. This is a chemical appealing boss. That was a bit of a stretch. Toxic bubble. Looks very familiar to a few different weapons I've seen. Air Shooter, one. Okay, two bosses down. Now for D Timberman. How am I gonna manage this? Like, I'm thinking the acid shooter might be useful. Might be useful because, like, uh, 
don't know, acid rusts the metal? I... I... you got me. See you at the boss. You see, this is the type of show all three that I'd like to do. Uh... <sighs> well then, uh... Guess he decided to grab a cup of joe and leave! <laughs> How about that? Alright, we're at the boss. Time to answer the age-old burning question. Poison is indeed this boss's weakness, and you know what? I can't give myself to give a damn. Because this boss isn't well designed. It's, so far at least, out of the bosses that I've played for this potential project, the that one boss. Terrible. Timberblade is a nice weapon. I always like my physical weapons in Mega Man games. I actually do. And my shields. Start the bonus weapon in Weapon Plus. Won't work in time trials. Okay. H dash. Ugh. What the hell are some of these filters? <laughs> okay, someone had a time and a half designing some of these filters. Just to be a gag. One bit. Why are there a bunch of... Okay, maybe uh, green is just the end. Okay then. What the hell? I'm just not gonna ask. Let me try out the Ah. Hedgehog dash. It's literally a jump dash on the attack. Because of course it is. This was part of the Sonic and Amateur Games Expo, so why wouldn't it be? I can understand why that would be broken. Alright, so what are these time trials exactly? Okay, so it's literally just... Run through the stage, run through the boss. Simple. I'm good. Thank you, I'm good. So, uh, yeah, this was Y+. Honestly, there are some questionable decisions in places that might need to be ironed out. Specifically, Timberman needs to be rebalanced. Maybe one or two of the top, one or two of the gotcha traps in Toxic Man stage might need to be adjusted. Like, specifically, maybe make the cracks in the pipes a little more obvious than they actually were. Because, I don't know about you, but I had trouble seeing. And... maybe... nerf... I'd, pro I'd potentially say maybe nerf Toxic Man's red, the red poison explosion attack. Because that one has a fairly tight window to dodge, and there's like zero room for error. Either probably 
slow it down slightly, or otherwise drop down the amount of shots to four, because that would be more than enough to cover the feel. Other than that, I'm... I'm looking forward to this project. Not looking forward to how negative the fandom is, however. So I would actually recommend that the creators of this go around, do some general policing, just to make sure that people aren't being unnecessarily negative. I understand if it's not exactly a good thing that the project wasn't showed to its full potential throughout the Sonic and Amateur Games Expo, but that's the reason why creators like me and, to a much greater extent, Razor and Xenon exist. We are after coverage. We pick up the slack where the other streamers likely wouldn't be able to or don't have the interest to poke at everything in some way, shape, or form. And sure, there are some holes, uh, some gaps and holes in our woodwork, so to speak, but that's to be expected. We're only human. We can only do so much. We have our own lives. If it were possible for us to do all of this and make a tidy budget, we would, but sadly, that's not the case for many of us. Because we end up being small. We're definitely not on the size of Razor and Xenon. But all things settled, I think that's where I'm going to call it. I'm going to return to my void and potentially try to contact RRVL about the whole Razor Mass issue. Then again, I'll look at it.